Hey, faithful listener, welcome to season six of the Bible Explained podcast, the podcast where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and enjoy today's discussion from the book of Judges. Good morning, friends and faithful listeners. You've tuned in to the Bible Explained podcast with your host, Jen, who happens to be me. So we're going to be reading Judges chapter 11, verses 12 through 29 today. And this is going to be discussing Jephthah. Jephthah again. I don't know if I'm saying this guy's name right. Jephthah, maybe? Jephthah? Don't know. But we are going to be talking about him. He is the next judge of Israel. And as you guys recall from the last time we we discussed him on Monday, he was considered to be a no good Nick, basically, because he was a son of a prostitute. And people didn't like him because he was the son of a prostitute. So they kicked him out of Gilead and uh, he went and made a name for himself because he was a a mighty guy. Like he was a mighty warrior. And so he was doing something elsewhere in a different land. And he, he had a reputation of just being a warrior. So finally, the people of Gilead need Jephthah. Like they really need him. So they go to get him and they're just like, hey, come and be our leader because the Ammonite people are basically rising up against us and we really need a leader. And there's nobody in Israel for some reason that can help us lead. So Jephthah's like, well, I thought you guys hated me. And they're like, no, 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 we don't hate you. We need you. So Jephthah goes with them and now he becomes the leader or the next judge of Israel, basically. So the, the Ammonite people are now moving in against Israel. So let's see what Jephthah does. Let's read Judges 11 verses 12 through 28. And as usual, I'll be reading out of the W.E.B. Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What do you have to do with me, that you have come to me to fight against my land? The king of the children of Ammon answered the messengers of Jephthah, because Israel took away my land when he came up out of Egypt, and from the Arnon even to the Jabbok and to the Jordan. Now therefore restore that territory again peaceably. Jephthah sent messengers again to the king of the children of Ammon, and he said to them, Jephthah says, Israel didn't take away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when they came up from Egypt and Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom saying, please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom didn't listen. In the same way, he sent it to the king of Moab, but he refused. So Israel stayed in Kadesh. Then they went through the wilderness and went around the land of Edom and the land of Moab and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and they encamped on the other side of the Arnon. But they didn't come within the border of Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Israel sent messengers to Sihon, the king of the Amorites, the king of the Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land to my place. But Sihon didn't trust Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all of his people together and encamped in Jahaz and fought against Israel. Yahweh, the God of Israel, delivered Sihon and all of his people into the hand of Israel, and they struck them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. They possessed the border of the Amorites, from the Arnon even to the Jabbok, and from the wilderness even to the Jordan. So now Yahweh, the God of Israel, has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And should you possess them? Won't you possess that which Kamash, your God, gives you to possess? So whoever Yahweh, our God, has dispossessed from before us, them we will possess. Now are you anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? Israel lived in Heshbon and its towns, and in Aror and its towns, and in all the cities that are along the side of the Arnon for three hundred years. Why didn't you recover them within that time? Therefore, I have not sinned against you, but you do me wrong to war against me. May Yahweh the judge be judged today between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. However, the king of the children of Ammon didn't listen to the words of Jephthah which he sent. So I want to read a psalm for you guys, Psalm 24, which I think kind of relates to what we're about to talk about today. Psalm 24 verses 1 and 2 say, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. So that means that every single thing was created by God on earth and 
all of earth actually belongs to God and so does every single person that God created. Everything that we have, everything we are actually belongs to God because he made us. So keep that psalm in mind as we talk about today's topic. So it says that Jephthah, he goes back with uh, the Gilead men and he's in this area of Mizpah. So he sends a message to the king of the Ammonites who has suddenly decided to war against Israel. And so Jephthah's like, okay, what's the problem here? Like, why are you just randomly warring against us? And the Ammonite king says to Jephthah, because Israel took away my land when he came up out of Egypt from the Arnon, even to the Jabbok and to the Jordan. Now, therefore, restore that territory again peaceably. So the, the king is like, OK, look, you guys, when you came up out of Egypt 300 years ago, you took our land. That was actually ours. It's been ours the entire time. You moved in. You took it from us. And so now give it back. Otherwise, I will take it from you. And man, don't we hear that argument all the time? Like (laughs) in today's day and age, we're always like, oh, those people on that nation uh, took that land from the people who lived there before them. We hear that same thing all the time nowadays. So it's, it's just the same arguments over and over and over. People haven't really changed very much at all, have they? So Jephthah sends another message to the king, and this one's a very long one. And he goes into the history of Israel and he's like, no, uh, Israel didn't take any land from you guys because this land was given to us by God. In fact, the Israelites were trying to be very peaceful when they were moving towards the promised land. And it was all these other kings that came and attacked us just because we existed and were nearby. And he's like, look, the king of the Amorites warred against us. We had no qualms with them. We had nothing to do with them and they warred against us. And so we won. We won against them and we took that land. So you have no claim to it whatsoever is what he says. And here's what's really interesting about this. It's actually verse 23. It says, so now Yahweh, the God of Israel, has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people, Israel, and should you possess it? So he's like, we won in that battle. God dispossessed those people, the Amorites, and we took it. So why should you take it? Why do you have more right to that land than we do? And then he says in verse 24, wouldn't you possess the land which Kamash, your God, gave you to possess? So he reminds them of their God who happened to be Kamash. And he's like, you know, you guys worship your God, Kamash. And if Kamash was like, hey, go take this land that I'm about to give you, wouldn't you go and take that land? Of course you would. You would absolutely go and take that land for yourselves. If your God happened to say that that land belonged to you, And our God, Yahweh, said that this land belonged to us. So we went and took it. So whoever Yahweh, our God, has dispossessed from before us, we are going to possess that land. So he's like, God was the one who dispossessed all the people from this land that we now own. He was the one who won all of our battles, won all of our wars, and gave us this land. And so we went in and possessed it after God gave it to us. Wouldn't you do the same thing? But verse 26 is my favorite here. He goes into how Israel lived in all of these towns that they possessed from the people. And he's like, we've been living in these towns for 300 years. That means that 300 years had passed since Israel had lived in Egypt. So a lot lot longer of time has passed than you initially think reading through the book of Judges. But 300 years has passed from Egypt to this time period that we're reading about today. So Jephthah's like, okay, you've had 300 years to possess the land. So why didn't you go and possess it? Why didn't you do it? You've had 300 years. We did it. You didn't do it. So uh, where were you? during that entire time period. And how can you say that this land is yours now when we've had it for 300 years? So verse 27, he says, Therefore, I have not a sinned against you, but you do me wrong to war against me. May Yahweh be the judge, or I'm sorry, may Yahweh the judge be judged today between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. So he, he goes back to the spiritual side of things. He's like, you have your God, 
Kamash. I have my God, Yahweh. And so my God, Yahweh, is going to be the judge between you and me. So he brings it back to the whole spiritual aspect of things. And I think this is why Jephthah is mentioned as one of the um, men of great faith in Hebrews, because he is. He's mentioned as having great faith, which is kind of shocking because he ends up being kind of a a weird guy. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in the next uh, couple chapters here. But it says in verse 28 that even though Jephthah made this very logical case for the people of Israel owning the land that they have, that the king of Ammon didn't listen. He didn't care. He was like, nope, that's my land. I decided it's mine. And so I am going to war against you. So like I said at the beginning of this episode, God is the one who truly owns everything. He owns all of the earth. He owns all of the nations on earth. And he's going to give them to whoever he wants to give them to. So we we don't have claim really to anything. It's all about God. It's about who God is choosing to lift up and who God is choosing to take away from. It kind of reminds me of a verse from Daniel where Daniel says that God is the one who raises up kings and he's the one ones who actually takes the crown away from other kings. So everything on earth belongs to God and we can't really fight against that. And the Ammonites were wrong here to try to fight against Jephthah and against um, the Israelite people just because they were unhappy that the Israelites had land that they wanted. So Jephthah is about to fight against the Ammonite people and we're going to see what happens next on Friday and it's going to be a great episode but I'm actually going to end the podcast a little bit early today because I'm not feeling well you guys I I am just not feeling good so if you guys could pray for me I feel like I'm getting a little bit sick and uh, I have honestly a throbbing migraine right now so I am going to finish up this episode and go lie down for the rest of the day hopefully But guys, I hope that you enjoyed this episode nonetheless and that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy listening and God bless.